So um, you brought us uh, some scenes from your last film, Marionette. Marionette was released a few weeks ago. It was is is a film directed by Albert Van Steen, and you didn't compose it alone, right? No, nope. no. Nope. Because we are very honored to have here Moritz Overdulva with us. Hi. Welcome, Moritz. So you can uh, also talk together about these scenes. Do you want to introduce the scene that we are going to watch? Yeah, this is um, a, a scene. There's a whole line of scenes which uh, I call the therapy line. There's just intimate sessions between Tekla and the boy, and the boy scribbles, and every once in a while he utters things and, and, and says some nasty things. In the beginning, she just laughs them away, and gradually she starts to feel some discomfort there because she starts to doubt if this is all maybe real. Is the boy really doing this or he's just bullshitting all the time? So that's, uh, so that sense of um, um, rising anxiety was really important with this scene. So let's watch it. Can you tell me about this drawing? What is it? An accident. A car can fly around the corner and hits the other one. Kaboom. And did you read about it? Was it on the news? No. I made it happen. You saw it happen in your mind? Do you see images? Or maybe you hear things? You can tell me. It, may, it might help. It scares you, doesn't it? But if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be here.
we just watched the first scene and um, uh, I'm actually very curious how you created, how you have created this ID. Yeah, um, so there's a couple of really, um, I think, vital elements in this first scene, which I use throughout the whole uh, line, that I always like to put, uh, get something quite literally from the image and uh, do something musical with that. So I wanted to specifically make a musical statement which represented that, that scribbling. So I made a, I wrote a really fast string line, so fast in fact, it's again this looking for extremes, that they, uh, the violinists are not in sync. So you get this smearing out, this sort of cloudy, yeah. with lots of noise. It gets so chaotic that it's actually almost more noise than musical. So uh, every time the boy scribbles, I sort of musically uh, weaving mm -hmm. that in and out. So that's one thing. And there's the bass flute, which is, yeah. especially in this all these therapist scenes, uh, important. That's also where the micro tonality already comes a little bit yeah. in, because well, I hear the flute sort of bending towards... Yeah, the flute, but especially it's interesting because I now find, I, I wrestled with this really for years to get uh, a proper way of incorporating this microtonal stuff into my music. And also, well, the very fact of choosing which kind of microtonality, because the possibilities are, are endless. It's really a, a, a universe of, of notes in between R12. So that was quite hard. Now I sort of found a solution in, uh, I just use it every once in a while and it's, but it comes up and it uh, sort of um, vanishes into the more normal music. So it, it's weaving in and out of the normal texture. And especially when in these kinds of <clears throat> scenes when she is uh, getting agitated, when he says, there's a gun in your drawer, for instance, there, I introduce a, uh, a higher, uh, somewhat higher than a quarter tone above the normal. So you get sort of out of balance by that, I think, because yeah. it's, it's this really nice. Yeah, it gives a, ten gives a certain tension. Yeah. yeah. And did you, what did you think about that when you heard that for the first time? Um, I heard that before f uh, from, uh, from him. Yeah. Um, I know his style quite well and he knows my style quite well, so I, I was not surprised. Okay, so for you this was typically yeah, hum. yeah, and it's well, it's it's bending notes is is very common in, yeah. in suspense music, but this is some, something slightly different because uh, the notes are sometimes steady on the on the wrong pitch. Yeah, I, I really like this this whole concept. I really was really happy when I found it because I I've always worked a lot with these uh, gliding tones yeah. because I. I really like these, this dynamic, uh, we're heading somewhere, but we don't know where that actually is because this, this, this instability of them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, I've used it for a long time, but this microtonality is somehow some kind of established uh, version of that because they, there's a, a definite fakeness to them because they are in between the real mm -hmm. notes. So you have this, this, whoa, what is this? Is this uh, uncomfortable almost. Yeah, so you have this, this weird twisted yeah. dimension to it. And how do you explain that to the musicians? <laughs> no, well, the, or the orchestra mostly plays diatonically, just normal. Okay. And my electronics, and sometimes I take single notes of the orchestra and detune them. Oh, you do it yourself? Yeah, afterwards. sometimes, or I do electronics. So especially yeah. in this scene, you can hear that there's electronics, which is uh, microtonal, and then the orchestra comes in. Ah. And I think I even heard them pitch their their strings or not the the, the violins. Yeah, no, but that's no, that's an electronic thing. Oh, like that's it. electronic. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting because they're, yeah, they're, they're, it it's bends from microtonal yeah. to normal pitch. So I I'd like to play with them and get them. Well, it's really because if you do microtonal stuff all the time, it becomes really dissonant and weird. Yeah. So I you need to be careful with that. Yeah. So about yeah. uh, you two, how do you meet? How long do you work together? How does it work? A long time ago. Yeah, we actually studied together. So we um, did uh, music technology studies. And interestingly, when we started, this wasn't meant to be a, a study for film composers at all. It was meant as a kind of, uh, which is still is uh, partly, as a, 
uh, intermediary between uh, musicians and uh, technicians, so to say, so people could communicate between those fields, it still is. But then there were lots of students. We, we started really when the, when the study uh, started off. At the very beginning, we were the very first students. And we started doing uh, scores for f uh, Film Academy films. Well, because almost, we liked it? Yeah, almost from the start. And then they sort of pragmatically shifted. to. I, I can still remember, they, uh, some at the beginning of the second year, they, there was the term, um, they introduced the term music for different, well, it was really weird kind of, um, a weird term for, for different circumstances or something like that. <laughs> and then they sort of started incorporating. Now it's really a, 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 an important part of the studies. But then because we were doing that all the time, I think they pragmatically shifted a bit towards. Yeah. And, and there's, a, there's a lot of technology involved uh, when making uh, music for film. Yeah, so it was really suited well for that. Uh, and especially then, because then there was some more technical difficulties yeah. doing yeah. film music with the synchronization. Yeah. It was all quite difficult stuff. But there was more people in the class and you got together. Yeah. So uh, why? <laughs> Actually, there was, uh, we had a, a collective, a composer's collective, right from the second year, I think. Yeah. Six uh, composers. With six composers and sound designers. And um, we learned a lot from each other and we did lots of well, even wider palette of range of films than you can do on your own. So, uh, and yeah, we didn't do that much together right then. But now mm. the last, uh, we uh, made up for that. We, uh, during the last, uh, well, decade or so, we did three, also not, not that much, but we worked together three or four times yeah. on yeah. bigger projects. And, and how do you divide the work when you for example, on this, on this move. The director actually sort of typecasts us more yeah. than we do ourselves, because oh. y you need to be, uh, I mean, you need to do everything, but then the director has this clear view. Elbert especially is quite a strong-willed person. Yeah. <laughs> he had this clear uh, division of this is for Han and that is for okay. Maurits. So and per scene. Written yeah. well, yeah, more but, less, and, but yeah. We, we learned to know his uh, the, the things he wants. So we did once we did it, uh, once more uh, in uh, something like ten years ago. We worked with him Swart on Water. his his last film, Swart Water, Blackwater. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we knew his preferences. So we div already started divided before we had any meeting. We sort of knew. Um, thing is, Mawit is really good with um, uh, counterpoint, which is a specific polyphonic mm -hmm. writing of music. And I don't use that that much, so we well. nicely... Well, I, I do, but his music is really um, strong in that sense. And Albert liked that for certain scenes. Yeah. And, well, those were my favorite scenes. But is that also, um, if, if we're talking about counterpoint, what, is there also a way that you like to compose? For example, do you work from the, um, the peak where you need to end? And you you work backwards, or do you work yeah. towards a certain? No, point? no. I, well, in terms of not in a well in a scene level, I the whole movie I I tend to pick the most intense moments, yeah. and then score those first because this is really important because when you you need to put a line somewhere and you need to work towards that. Otherwise, yeah. if you start somewhere, you need to. Uh, need to know. No, yeah, yeah. You have to get stronger and stronger to a certain point. You need to yeah. first. Uh, find a maximum and then work towards that. That's an yeah. um, important thing. Yeah. Which is quite difficult. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, uh, your uh, style must be cohesive in the end. Yeah, yeah. And, it actually is. Yeah. And uh, what if you disagree? Well, it's, it's, um, our, our working spots are, are uh, 10 meters yeah, away, so that's, really that's very uh, uh, easy to, to collaborate. And, uh, uh, it's yeah, important uh, to keep him informed of my progress and uh, the other way around. Yeah, it's really, it, it's again, um, it's interesting when you work with two people. I, I was talking about the, uh, the editor involved and producer. When you meet, meet up with a director, you have this one-on-one -on -one thing. But then now there's a triangle because we have yeah. two composers yeah. and there's a director, which is really completely different socially 
social uh, dynamically speaking, completely different thing. Yeah, especially for the director. Especially, especially for the director. It was his choice. In yeah. The, so in this case. yeah, what we what we used to do is have separate meetings, and speak with have meetings with the director separately. But then you sort of lose control about uh, for half the score. And there were even directors, we, we did that more often, who sort of capitalized on that and sort of tried to, well, play us against each, yeah, each yeah. other. Challenge Being each other. Being the control freak. Yeah, that, that happened. So this time, what we did this time with a marionette, we just um, talked things through for each cue. Each, each, when a meeting with the director uh, was coming up, we just went through everything, listened to it. We were already content with each other's work, yeah. each other's work, sorry. And then we had the meeting, the three of us, with the, three, uh, with the director, and we had a sort of a, already a united front towards the director, which can be hard for the director, I think, sometimes. Yeah. But that the experience working there. Yeah, definitely. You already it's know a, how it's yeah, going to it's be. It's a learning experience, yeah. yeah. yeah.